So this is an applied question in which we will have to apply our knowledge about norm, normally distributed random variables. So here we have a random variable, random variable, let's call it Q, which is normally distributed with mean 100 and standard deviation 10, that means variance 10 squared. Remember, we always refer to the variance as that second input. So, what does that represent? That random variable Q, it's sort of the results for an IQ test for some population. So let's go and answer questions here. A. What's the probability that a randomly selected individual from the population will score between 90 and 110? As usual, we will think about a little plot here. So here's our random variable Q. It is centered around the mean of 100. And now the question is, what's the probability that someone scores between uh, 90 and 110? So what we are interested in is the size of this area here. As we don't have a table for a normal distribution with mean 100 and variance 100, we will translate that to our standard normal world, which has a mean of zero. And the question is, what are these two values? What do 90 and 110 correspond to? In the said world, we use our translation formula that is 90 minus the mean of 100 divided by the standard deviation which is 10 so that is minus 1 so that 90 translates into minus 1 and that 110 translates into let's see 110 minus 100 divided by 10 well that is 1 okay that value translates into 1 so now we're interested in the size of that probability because the probability that Q is between 90 and 110 is the same as the probability that Z is between minus 1 and 1. So remember we are having a continuously distributed random variable whether you write smaller or smaller or larger doesn't really matter. So to see how we get this from the standard normal table we need to recognize that the standard normal table we get probabilities of the form z is smaller or equal than something. So to get that area what we're going to do is we'll calculate what we get from the standard normal table the size of that area which is the probability that z is smaller or equal to 1 and we subtract from it the probability that z is smaller or equal to negative 1 because that's that green area and what we are left with is the blue area in the middle negative one so let's see let's go to the table let's start with that negative one here we have negative one in our standard normal table that is therefore value of remember that first column is the second digit zero so negative one is 15.87 so minus 0.158 7 and then the red the size of the red area is that set is smaller or equal to 1 let's do it straight forward we just go to this value here 1 so that is 8413 1.8413 and therefore what we are left with is a point 
Let's just make sure I get that right. So I should use glue here. So this is zero point six eight two six. So the second part of the question B part B. An employer which to identify potential high flies and intends to do this using the outcome of the IQ test. Now, before I continue, I should of course say that would be a pretty bad decision to only use your decision on IQ tests. There's lots of evidence that IQ tests are sort of culturally laden. You can train for them and therefore if you can train for them, then do they really represent intelligence? But anyway, that aside. So if the employer offers these positions to people with IQs in the top 1% of the population, what is the score the employer will use to decide job offers? So what we are now after, let me use a different color. I haven't used gray here, but I use the same two things here. What we are after here is basically what is the value of Q, let's call it Q0, that cuts off 1% of the distribution here in the right hand tail. Now, of course, so that means we know a probability and that means we can use the probability table in reverse form, but we don't have a probability table for Q, we have one for Z. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find that Z zero value that cuts off 1%. And then we will be going to use our translation formula, but backwards. So we'll start out with the probability that Z is large or equal to Z zero is equal to 0 0.01. So that's the same as saying the probability that z is small or equal to z0 is equal to 0 0.99 because that is just the area to the left of that point. And that is the type of probability we can read off the table. So let's do that. Go to the table, find 0 0.99. So this is down here. This is the value closest to 0 0.99, 0 0.9901. So it's 2.3. Three. So the probability that Z is smaller or equal to 2.33 is equal to 0 0.99. So now we got to translate that into the P world. Remember, our translation formula is Z equals to Q minus the mean 100 divided by the standard deviation. So now we know that Z value, that is 2.33. And all we got to do is we got to find that Q value. And if you solve that for Q, what you get is 123.3. So that means that value Q here, that is 123.3. People with IQs, if I, the IQ variable is randomly distributed with that information. Now, we didn't question that here, so that was just given. Then, if you have an IQ of 1.2, 3.3 or higher, you belong to the top 1% in terms of results on the IQ test. And then that would be the sort of people this employer wishes to target.